The time has come to start making some sort of forward progress on the wrought iron dragon door knocker. This is that piece of wrought iron that Roy from Christ Center Ironworks sent to several other blacksmiths as a collaboration project. Everybody's going to make something different. We'll see what everybody comes up with. But I have decided to do a door knocker with a dragon head on it. Now to do that, I'm going to need some specialized tools, figure carving tools, to do eyes and mouths and fangs and horns and nostrils and all sorts of things that take a piece of wrought iron and make it look like a dragon. I have a dragon here that I did many years ago. I bet this little sign bracket was 25 years ago. It has been up in the, the shed in storage, hanging in the rafters here for 10 years, and it was probably in storage somewhere else for 10 or 15 years before that. just doesn't get used because the sign that used to hang from it weathered so bad and fell apart that I just don't need the bracket anymore. I just cut it off the post this morning and we can take a look at this dragon. It's not the same dragon we'll be making. I'm going to try and make a much nicer dragon for this project. But we can look at some of the issues we have for certain features on the dragon and some of the tools that might solve those issues. So here's a look at this dragon. And he's been doubled over. This is a fairly thin bar. He's been doubled back, forge welded to create more mass for the head. And I don't remember exactly what order I did everything in. Typically, I probably would start by defining the facial features, stepping down the, the nose and such. But then at some point, you need to start defining specific features. For the eyes, sometimes it is very handy to be able to step down with just a plain round punch. Try and figure out how to hold these so you can see them just right. There we go. So that's just a regular round punch you'd use for punching a hole, but you can use that to create the eye sockets and drive it down in here. And then you can refine that with an eyeball punch. This is very similar to a rivet setter, but it's a little bit sharper around the edge usually, and they don't have to be perfectly round. This one is not the one that was used on this dragon. I have no idea what I used for that or if I still own it. I didn't find it in my collection of tools here. But eyeball punches take a lot of different shapes. This is a little tiny one. This is an oval one, and I think we made this in a video. I'll try to link to that video up in the, the top left corner. So, somewhere right up in... Somewhere right up in here, I'll try to link to that. I'm kind of looking upside down at the camera here, so it's kind of hard to tell. Like being dyslexic, I suppose. So anyways, that's an oval with a kind of a teardrop eyeball punch. And I have a very small eyeball punch. But I don't have one quite this size, and I think I probably need to make one specific for the dragon we're going to do. For the nostrils, that's pretty simple. Just a regular center punch does the nostrils. And it's just a matter of driving the center punch in to the nostrils. That adds some flair. We'll talk about all this when we do it. For splitting the mouth out, a long, skinny, flat chisel helps. So that's a good way to open the mouth up. And it just depends what kind of mouth you want. The tongue is an added on piece. The mouth is opened up and then drilled. And this, I think, is uh, brazed or soldered in. But you can also do a shrink fit. This chisel is also handy for getting behind the ears or the horns, depending on what they are. As is a slightly curved chisel or a gouge shape. You can get in here. And these real fine tools, these two that I just showed you, are both made out of H13. I made those ages ago when I was too naive to know that I shouldn't be able to properly harden and temper H13 as a uh, novice blacksmith and I managed to get away with it and they perform wonderfully. So those are just some of the basic tools 
There's some little eyebrow effects here that may have been done with a chisel like this, or they may have been done with a specific round chisel. And there's some other details that we may want to look at in the dragon we're going to make. So those are some basic tools. I have a wide assortment of these tools. So we've looked at the, the various eyeball punches, the center punch, and we've seen the, the specialty chisels. But sometimes just oval flat bottom punches or sets with a rounded edge, unlike the regular punch you might use for punching holes that is square across the end. What for this sometimes a rounded edge is better so they become specialty tools that are meant just for a project like this. If you need to work down in side areas like around the the nose or something and need to flatten things instead of the swinging hammers you can use hand sets that are square or rectangular set tools are just there to, to work with and we'll see all this stuff when we do it if we need it. Ball nose punches or round nose punches come in very handy for a lot of things so we probably should have some of those on hand as do various size fullers. Now a lot of tools like this and the way you can use them can be found in this book the Iron Menagerie from the Guild of Metalsmiths. I'm not going to really go through that and share their images. It's a copyrighted book so if you want to see what's in it you're going to have to buy the book. But it's they don't actually show a dragon but they show lots of different figureheads and they talk about a variety of tools in there. Some of them are very similar to what I like and some of what I like are not shown in here. So we're going to try and show you what I end up with as far as a set of tools specifically with this dragon project in mind. Now I have a pretty good assortment of tools that are useful for figure carving and I have other tools that might come in handy things like rivet headers that might make a good eyeball punch if it's just the right size, regular flat bottom punches that might be ideal, lots of things that can be used to work towards this and sometimes even just a scrap bar to use for a single purpose because you need a little round depression and you can just find something in the scrap pile might work. But because I do like to have good tools and I like tools that are all relatively similar so they behave the same and this is a real hodgepodge, I think I'm going to actually make a whole new set of figure carving tools. I will try not to duplicate exactly any of the ones that are in, in this pile of tools because these are still good tools and I'm not going to get rid of them. But I'm going to try and fill in the gaps, make a few other sizes of eye punches, maybe a different shape, and then I'm going to experiment a little bit in scrap material to see what we might like for this dragon and what works. What I like to start with for this is three quarter inch round S7 tool steel. It's a shock resisting tool steel. It has relatively good hot work properties. So it's very good for this kind of stuff. These real delicate chisels might be better out of H13 that is a better hot work steel and you'll notice that these are have gotten clear past the blue range in use and they still hold an edge fine because that's what H13 is meant to do. S7 is not bad for that. So I think I'll still make some new chisels similar to this out of the S7. They'll be a little heavier, a little more solid. But these real fine delicate ones that I did years ago out of H13 will probably still get used on this project. So am I going to show making every single tool I'm going to make? Probably not. I'll try to be somewhat representative, but once you know how to make one or two of these, the principles apply to all of them. And once you know how to make an eyeball punch, you can make any size or shape eyeball punch you want. You don't need to see a quarter inch eyeball punch, a five sixteenths eyeball punch, and a three eighths eyeball punch made. They're all made the same, it's just make them the size you want them. Same thing with chisels and other tools. But as we get to specific types of tools or unusual tools, I will try to include that. I have ordered 12 feet of this. It comes, I buy it from McMaster Car. I'm here in the United States. McMaster Car tends to ship overnight 
but they ship at a price that's the same for ground shipping. So I ordered two six-foot bars last Friday. It will be here any minute now, and I'll be able to work on these probably before this video is through being filmed. I will have all of the material I need to make the full set. I have two pieces right now, so I'm going to start with that. And I think I'm going to start with a tool that I have never seen or made or seen anybody else use, and that would be a chisel specifically for making scales. I don't know if this dragon will have scales. A lot of the old dragon door knockers I've seen don't have that, but I want to experiment with a little bit and see if I like the pattern. And the only way to do that is to just go ahead and make the tool. So I'm going to take one of these and we're going to make a scale chisel, for lack of a better term, which is very similar to a half round chisel. And we may even make some half round chisels. But we will see, and let's get to work. Now for my scales, what I envision, I suppose, would be a shield shape. So kind of round on the sides, and come down to not really a point, but kind of rounded. And that these could be then set in side by side. And of course by having a chisel they all look the same. And you can put more of them down, down in here. Yeah, see, that's why you get a, a chisel that makes these all the same, is they look better. Anyways, you get the idea. Now, another thing that's important, you could just make a chisel shape that does this, and you could use a curved chisel and come from both sides, but that's a little less reliable, and you're probably going to get little chop marks on the ends that overlap and have trouble with it. But if it's just a chisel cut, you've just created lines, and while that is certainly better than nothing, my hope is to create a tool that if you have a scale here, it will have a straight side and a bevel up to the next scale to give the illusion that these over, actually overlap some. So that's my plan with this tool. So I have to make the inside, this part of the cut, has to be vertical, and the, this part of the cut has to be sloped so you get that little little effect in here that and a little bit of a shadow line to make these look like they overlap. Again I'm starting with S7 round bar. This is not actually drill rod, it's the stuff that is not exact size. Drill rod is more precise in its diameter and costs more you can also sometimes find this pre-hardened, but that's a lot harder to work with, so I always make sure I buy the annealed S7. I'm going to lock that in the vise. This is really going to be mostly a stock removal process. I'm going to cut the inside shape out of the bar, and then I am going to grind the outside shape till it's right. Then if I need to do anything to the handle after that, I'll do that. But to start with, it's just a matter of grinding or filing or doing whatever you need to do to create an inside shape that you like. Now an angle grinder is a good tool for at least getting started. You can cut in from both sides and create that kind of triangular shape and get a lot of this material out of here. In the long run, a file is probably what's going to be needed to actually make it look just like I want it to look on the inside. But we'll start with the angle grinder and see what we come up with.
Now I may have gotten a little carried away here. I may have gone deeper than I want, and I think it's a little wider than I want. So before I do any more cutting on the inside here, I think I'm going to take it to the forge and I'm going to bring that together by using abrasive tools like the die grinder and the disc grinder or the angle grinder. You can still cut it if this is hardened after forging. If you're filing this, because this is air hardening steel, you're going to have a real tough time after you forge it because annealing this stuff is really difficult to get a good annealing job. Another thing to consider, an advantage to the rotary tools, is because they will cut a hollow, you can get that straight cut right at the edge where I want it. Whereas with a file, you would have a slope on the inside. And I'm trying to avoid that. I want that vertical cut here, and I want the slope on the outside. But anyways, let's go to the forge. Let's do that. And I'm also going to make the shank octagonal, just because I kind of like that better. I like these tools with the octagonal handles that are made out of the same starting material. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the handles and forge that octagon under the power hammer and then we'll deal with the working end and try to reshape it a little bit. treadle hammer. I want to put my touch mark on. The last name and the bear paw. And I'm going to turn it over and I have a stamp that just says S7. That's just so I remember in the future what steel I made this out of. it's still straight. That's all I need to do to the handle into this tool. Let's turn it around and work on the, the working end. I just think this ended up a little bit too wide and too far over to this side. So I'm just going to push it over just a little bit, close it up just a little bit. I think that's going to work pretty good. I think that might be a shape I'm going to be happy with. So now you can't actually normalize S7 tool steel. It's not possible. But I'm going to go ahead and bury it in the vermiculite because that's as close to annealing as I can come and is still going to be harder than normalizing or annealing other steels would be because it is an air hardening steel. So we're going to do that and it'll be Harder than I'd like, but with the angle grinder and the die grinder, we'll still be able to clean that up. So here's our chisel after that little bit of modification at the anvil. I left this in the vermiculite for three hours, and it was cool enough to touch, but not cool enough to hold on to. So it's just now cooling off. That's still uncomfortably warm. And that's a much better shape, but it's not perfect. 
the edges aren't quite the same length, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit, and I'm going to try and get in here and just round that up just a little so it's not as straight-sided. These are really fussy to do things like this, but this is probably the most difficult tool that I will make for doing this dragon. And like I said, I may not actually use this tool in the long run. I may decide the scales look a little bit over the top or something, but we're going to find out. made a big improvement. The next thing I want to do is take it to the belt grinder and grind the bevel on this. It's fairly straight in here by virtue of using rotary tools that will cut a hollow and I can come straight out. If you use a file to cut that, you have to come in at an angle and you end up with an inside bevel, which I was trying to avoid with this particular tool. So I'm going to go ahead and grind the outer profile get that to what I want. And I'm going to grind that at about 45 degrees or a little bit steeper maybe. I don't want it too steep because it's not a cutting chisel. It's meant to just make an impression. But I'll be right back. Here is the chisel that we've been working on. I realize that it wants to focus my hand better than it does the, the chisel. And I also made another one that is a slightly steeper pitch. So I've made two of these. I guess I'll just call them scale chisels. Because I've never seen one before and I'm not sure what else you'd call it. This is a hunk of lead. This is a good way to test these. Remember, lead's not good for you, so if you're working in lead, make sure you wash your hands when you're done. We'll just Make a little row of depressions here. Let's see if we can see that or not. Yeah, you can sort of see it. I think that's what I'm going for. It's just whether or not I'll actually use it. But the other chisel then is just a little bit smaller. It may look slightly different in hot iron, although not a lot different. Yeah, that makes it a little harder to see the impression when the lead starts to fall apart like that. I'm trying to melt it down and put it back into a little sheet. I think I actually like the smaller one a little bit better. It looks a little bit more scale-like. So that's just an idea that I had that I thought I would try out. And we'll see whether or not I actually use them on this dragon. But if not, they'll get used for some sort of fish scales or something else at some point in the future, or some scallop border, or who knows what we'll use them for. But my guess is, sooner or later, these will be good tools. I'll be glad that I took the time to make them. Whether they work for the dragon is up to doing some test pieces, trying them out on hot iron. But I'm not going to do that until they are hardened and tempered, and I'm going to wait to harden and temper these until I have all of the tools made, and then I'll harden and temper them all as one large batch. That is one of the reasons I like the S7, is that it is an air hardening steel, don't have to mess with oil, 
you just bring them up to critical temperature. I stand them up in the bucket of vermiculite so that this end cools slower and is not as hard and that the struck end or the, the working end that is standing up in the air and you can, can air cool just fine. Then you temper them and you end up with a very nice tool. S7 seems to be fairly forgiving, but it does have a very high critical temperature, 1725, and you need to be able to kind of judge that. So it's ideal in a, an electric oven with a temperature control on it that you can get to 1725. But I've per been pretty lucky hardening these just by eye in the forge. Figure out what that temperature is. Look at one of the charts that, that'll tell you where that is in the incandescent range. If you find some sort of a chart, 1725 is somewhere in the, the medium to, to full orange color on the chart. And you can judge that close enough by eye for air cooling. Now, as I predicted, the rest of my S7 steel arrived while I was making this video. So I now have enough to make a very nice set of tools once I set it free from its packaging. Typically I order this stuff in three foot pieces which is much easier to deal with but it's a little bit cheaper in the six foot pieces and I'll just have to compare the shipping price of six foot pieces versus four or two six footers versus four or three footers. The shipping cost may actually be high enough that it might have been cheaper to buy the, the three-footers by the time you pay shipping on a six-foot long tube. Because we're looking at about $100 worth of steel with shipping. But I'm going to get 16 tools out of these two bars. Plus the two that we did today would be 18. And I have three that were done of the same size and the same approach making the octagon bar. So I'll have a set of 21 figure carving tools by the time I'm done. That's a pretty good deal for that kind of money. So all in all I'll have oh, well under $150 in 21 tools and these will to be tools that will not only last me the rest of my life but they should pass, pass down to at least one other generation of blacksmiths if not more. Now I'm not going to show making every tool that I'm going to use for this dragon. I will show the tools after they're all done. When we do the dragon and do test pieces, I will show what tools I'm using. But if you understand how to make a few basic styles of tools, all of these are possible. You just need to change the details just a little bit. Making a ball in punch is no different than making a flat bottom punch and we've shown how to make flat bottom punches before. You just grind the end into a ball shape or file it if that's all you have. Really very simple to do. Most of these tools should be near polished. They'll do a lot better job for you. Um, chisels are just chisels. They're just a little bit more delicate, a little finer. And I'll talk about what some of these angles are when we get to the point of doing some chisels. But again, we've made chisels before. I don't know that we need to make these again. We have made eyeball punches. This is one we did as a part of a video before we did the wizard heads. So if you want to see how to make an eyeball punch, go back and watch that video. So some of these things I'm not going to show as part of this project. I'll show a few more. We'll do some more of this. But for the most part, I'm just going to make these tools, show you what I ended up with and talk about them as we use them. So if you have questions on specific tools, try to watch all those videos that I've just mentioned, and I'll try to link to those up here in the corner throughout the process of making this video. As I get it edited and uploaded, I can put, put those little links. They show up as a little white dot in the corner. Maybe they get a description for a little bit of time, but I can put five of those links in each video, so I'll try to link to whatever we've done that seems the most applicable on these. And then there will be a playlist for a dragon's head or wrought iron dragon or whatever I decide to call it where all of the relevant stuff will be placed. Anyways, I know there wasn't a lot of forging involved in that video today. Very little. I think this is some place where you use whatever it takes to get the tool you want whether that's a milling machine or drill or files or grinder, die grinder, dremel tool, the sky's the limit. 
the tool is the means to the end, and you're still going to hot forge. So if whatever gives you the tool that you need, fair game, go for it. I hope you enjoyed that video. You can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Do make time in your day to get out to your shop, challenge yourself, make some new tools, make some projects, but try to spend time in your shop when you can. Do stay safe while you're out there and do wear your safety glasses. And we will see you for the next one.